This episode of the Small Business Conversations podcast is sponsored by Nedbank Small Business Services. This is Small Business Conversations with Akona Machoba, unlocking essential advice, opinions, and key issues that affect South Africa's small business community. Welcome to yet another edition of the Small Business Conversations podcast. I am your host, Akona Machoba. Thank you once again for choosing this weekly SME show as your preferred platform to delve into the important issues affecting South Africa's small business environment. Now, the Black Friday shopping craze is upon us, and whichever side of the conversation you find yourself on, it is a time when businesses get to make a lot of money and consumers look to observe major savings on purchases. In fact, research done by the Bureau of Market Research on behalf of fintech company Capital Connect said believes that 26 billion rand in extra retail turnover could be made from the promotional sales period this year alone. But how do small businesses ensure they get a slice of that pie? Well, I am joined by Capital Connect's Head of Capital Growth, Gerard LaRue, who will be guiding us through that conversation today. Welcome to the pod, Gerard. Thank you for having me, Akona. Now, I think these conversations around Black Friday are get to be very exciting. Um, just festival or festive promotional periods are exciting for a lot of people. But before we go too far into the conversation, I hope you can help us understand how the research got to the magic number of 26 billion rands. What elements were factored into that calculation? Uh, thanks, Akona. So, yeah, um, the Bureau of Market Research, who we tasked to do this study on our behalf, um, they use big data, retail history and trends that uh, they use in their calculations to understand what is predicted uh, for this Black Friday, obviously taking previous Black Fridays into consideration. So it's not always 100% correct, but it's quite accurate, especially if you take the, the previous years. Um, and that then helps us to give retailers a little bit of feedback and help them prepare properly for Black Friday so that they can obviously benefit from uh, the big piece of the pie that's coming their way. And what period are we dealing with here? Is this um, 26 billion rand from maybe one day in November? I think it's towards the end of November or is it the entire month? How long are the periods that we're dealing with? That's what makes it so interesting, uh, Akona, because if we look back at 2015, historically, Black Friday was literally just one day uh, with blockbuster specials, especially your high end items, especially on the electronic side. But over the years, Black Friday has evolved and we're currently sitting at probably almost a month period of Black Friday, which has some benefits because I think then there's a longer period that retailers can try and capture the consumer's attention and hopefully increase their sales. But what we've also picked up with the study is that uh, some consumers are now second guessing. Is it actually a special? Should I rather wait until January? Maybe there's an even better special. So it's a little bit of a a mixed feedback. uh, But in my personal opinion, based on the research, I think this is to the benefit of the retailer seeing that it's over a longer period. And if, if they are innovative and they do this the right way, they are potentially getting a bigger piece of the pie over a much uh, longer period. Interesting. So, Gerard, one thing that was stated in the research that you guys um, put out this week is that the 2023 estimate is higher than the estimate that was forecast for um, 2022. Um, I think that was around 19 billion rand, you guys said. Why is that? I mean, we've seen continuous reports, especially this year, around the local consumer being under pressure. So where is all of this money suddenly coming from? So I think what is happening, if we we look at the the data as well, it shows us that uh, consumers are going to focus on essential products um, this coming Black Friday. Uh, They want to focus on these uh, like cooking oil, uh, chicken, fruit and veg, these type of products that they know they're going to use for a foreseeable period uh, instead of these big ticket items. And I think because there's uh, an appeal to the biggest portion of the population that historically didn't prepare for Black Friday to buy, a, for arguments like a 30,000 Rand TV, but now focusing on these essential products, um, that's where you see that difference because the biggest part of the population, even though the earning is a lot less, um, that that volume in spending obviously uh, racks that number up. And that's how you get to the 26 billion. Are you guys seeing consumers putting more effort in um, planning for the Black Friday promotional period? Is it maybe people are saving that we're seeing this higher forecast for for sales turnover this year? Yeah, I think the the typical consumer is getting extremely savvy and they're not just going for the first uh, special that, that comes their way. 
but I also think the the retailers that are innovative and they make use of what we call an omni-channel. So it's not just uh, your brick and mortar, which is still about 95% of total sales, but they are luring the consumers through social media for arguments like advertising on TV, radio, et cetera. And that's getting them to the store then for that specific special. Uh, and from there, the basket size then increases with uh, cross-selling other products that then catches their eye due to potentially digital screens inside the store or a very creative campaign, et cetera. And I think that that is what's driving this uh, the significant increase compared to 2022 to 2023. And then which industries are expected to get the most attention this time around and why those specific industries? So if we look at the, the sectors and we break it down, uh, the highest sector that will, or the, the sector that will gain the highest, which is around about 15 billion, is your textile, clothing and footwear. We're obviously ending, heading into the, the summer season now and uh, people need to maybe uh, just sharpen up their wardrobes, etc. cetera. Um, clothing is also something that depending on where you purchase it from, it can be very cost effective. So we're seeing a big push uh, towards that for Black Friday. And then second is your general dealers. That's your typical supermarkets um, like Spar, you can pay OK, etc. They're seeing about a, just over 9 billion rand uh, part of the pie that they will get. Um, then household furniture, appliances, equipment, about 1.6 billion, still significant increase there. And hardware, paint and glass, 707 million. For this Black Friday period, the two sectors that are seeing a decline is food, beverage and tobacco specialist stores that's seeing about a, a minus 3.5% decline and also f- uh, pharmaceutical, medical goods, etc. A decline of minus 2.8%. Now, it's interesting because if you look on the general dealer side, it's getting almost 10 billion uh, piece of the pie. They are also incorporating some of these products that you would typically find in a speciality store. So I don't think it's a, a lack of consumer not buying those products anymore. I just think the consumer is enjoying the benefit of going to one store and getting number of items there. So that that's starting to play a role. Sometimes a speciality store is obviously, depending on the product or the, the, the service, it, 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 it becomes popular. Uh, but the general dealers are becoming clever and they are understanding their customer in their immediate area. What are their requirements? And they are catering for those customers and slowly but surely stealing that uh, food traffic from the speciality stores. Now, typically in the past, actually, even currently, we think of your promotional periods like your Black Fridays as a game for big business where they have more stake in the game and they're able to kind of push the promotions better or or, or more loudly than a small business would. How then does a small business get into the action of Black Friday? We're living in an age where everybody's got access to a number of methods of reaching the customer audience. Now, there's a few ways of doing that. You can do mass marketing and um, hopefully some of it comes back and it turns into sales. But a lot of these retailers and the, the smaller SMEs are getting extremely clever and they are using influencers to drive some of the products uh, that they would want to, to, to sell. And a couple of examples of those from big retailers is the Prime Energy Drink. Um, recently, it's these Feastables, which is Mr. Beast, which which is a YouTube influencer. He's selling these chocolates. Um, so these um, influencers are driving the behavior, sometimes for, yes, a lower age uh, bracket. Uh, but remember, um, if your kids are <laughs> forcing you to go to a specific store to buy a specific item and you are there, then it's the retailer's responsibility to then make the experience inside the store in such a way that you're not just there for that one item. You're not saying, oh, but there's uh, an item that I actually need at a recently, reasonably good price. So let me purchase that as well. So I think SMEs, um, your smaller SMEs, needs to focus on what their immediate community or customers are looking for and use the tools to the, that's available to them, social media, um, influencers, etc., to try and get those consumers to the store for that specific item and then cross-selling from there. And then I'm, I'm wondering for maybe those businesses that aren't necessarily selling your tangible products who sell maybe services, let's say I'm, I have a small bookkeeping company, am I able to then kind of incorporate that festive Black Friday promotional attitude to my business? And how do I go about doing that without necessarily losing value? 
So we, our focus is in the retail market. So I'm quite comfortable to, to talk about that in terms of uh, out of the box thinking and ideas, both from a retailer and a consumer perspective. When it comes to, to non-retail types of businesses, um, again, I think social media plays a massive role, um, depending on which obviously channels you use, um, because that is not just promoting your product, but um, uh, let, letting customers that use, use you or has been using you for quite some time uh, become testimonials uh, for your service as well. So a typical bookkeeper, as an example, um, might have a handful of extremely happy customers that can either through a video testimonial or just a, a quote, um, promote the, the excellent service that they've been receiving from this specific uh, bookkeeper for argument's sake. And that can definitely drive some people to at least have a look at it and, and potentially even reach out by the social media and saying, okay, how can I get in contact with them, et cetera. So again, I think trying to get to as many opportunities as possible, social media um, is a good avenue for, for those type of small businesses to, to pursue. And then finally, Gerard, just on the reluctant consumer, I mean, obviously consumers are feeling the pressure and it's been a long year of high food prices, interest rates and whatever else. I'm wondering how do then SMEs attract, what strategies should they be implementing to attract an already reluctant consumer um, to especially compete with those big brands now in the retail sector? So I think, again, though, we all know K- KYC, know your customer. Um, so that's not just applicable to FICA requirements. That is also applicable to what type of products do you stock? And making sure that the experience that the consumer uh, goes through when they go to your business is is an excellent and a, and a very uh, joyful experience. So it's difficult to catch the consumer's attention these days because the options are so limitless um, from their, their perspective. But what savvy retailers are doing that's thinking outside the box, that's making sure they are implementing innovative strategies, um, that then benefits them. So yes, maybe this Black Friday, um, using fintech companies like ourselves for, for getting capital so that you can buy certain products in bulk, um, so that you can negotiate an early settlement discount, um, et cetera, that can drive that feed to the store and then hopefully cross sell the basket size. But I think the most important thing that, that these retailers need to then do when they have phenomenal Black Friday sales is reinvest that money into the business. Black Friday is just one example. Festive season is coming up, back to school is coming up. And then there's a whole list of anything from um, Easter to Father's Day, Mother's Day, etc. that these retailers can benefit from. And we've seen a number of examples where retailers are starting to look at each and every uh, square meter in their store. And they are trying to get a return on investment on each square meter in the store. And there's some stores that have, for argument's sake, a container on the outside in the parking area where they are selling coffee. Now, that's a a very um, quick setup. But the benefit with that is I'm going into the shop for argument's sake. The wife is doing the shopping. The husband is grabbing a coffee outside. Maybe you've got some cyclists in the area that then goes to this uh, parking area on a Saturday morning drinking coffee and maybe you're cross-selling muffins and then salamis and those type of things. So it is important that retailers not just benefit from the Black Friday or do everything in their power to benefit from it. Start thinking ahead already, festive season, back to school, et cetera, and incorporate some initiatives that just make sure that you capture the, the, the consumer at each and every opportunity that you can throughout the year. And there you have it, Gerard Leroux of Capital Connect, giving small business owners some advice on how to approach the Black Friday sales period to help boost much-needed turnover. Thank you so much, Gerard. Thank you, Akona. This episode of the Small Business Conversations podcast was sponsored by NetBank Small Business Services. If you enjoyed this episode, please download the Small Business Conversations podcast on all digital platforms and don't forget to share our episodes. If you want to contribute to the conversation, you can X me at machoba underscore A or you can email us at smepodcast at maniweb.co.za to share your thoughts and suggestions for future conversations. Until next time, goodbye and do not forget to support a small business near you. You've been listening to Small Business Conversations with Akona Machoba. To listen to more MoneyWeb podcasts, go to moneyweb.co.za, the MoneyWeb app, or your favorite podcast platforms. MoneyWeb, your trusted source for business and investment insights.